If only I had a faster lens. If only I had a camera with more resolution, a faster frame rate. If only my gimbal was lighter and faster. Does any of that sound familiar? And does it also sound familiar that having bought your new toy, not only has it not solved the initial problem you identified, but it's created a raft of problems of its own. What I want to talk to you about in this video is the idea that you can't necessarily buy your way out of trouble. Now I should qualify that slightly and say I'm not talking about gear acquisition syndrome as it's known. Um, it's absolutely fine to want new gear and buy new gear, there's no harm in that at all. The mistake comes in thinking that either a certain piece of new equipment or lots of new equipment will radically transform your photography, improve your life, etc, etc. All too often the answer is not to be found in just buying some new gear. So there are two key issues here in my experience with thinking that the gear will solve your problems. The first is that all the gear in the world and the most expensive high spec gear in the world is useless if you don't know how to use it, how to make it work for you, and how to incorporate it into your skill set, your technique, and your craft. And secondly, there is the inescapable problem that the more gear you have, the more complex the gear, the more things there are to go wrong. And the other thing to bear in mind is that, as a rule, it's extremely rare for one piece of kit to revolutionize your work. It's much more likely as it is in most things in life, that change happens incrementally, little by little. Now, regarding that first problem, the idea that no matter how amazing the gear is, it's useless if you don't know how to work it, I am definitely guilty of making this mistake. I hold my hand up and confess fully to using stuff before I'm totally comfortable and sometimes even almost ignorant of how it works. Now, having been shooting, in my case, for very nearly 30 years now, I've used an awful lot of kit, and back in the day when I started, cameras were relatively simple. Uh, to be honest, you could pick up a camera from a different manufacturer than the one you used regularly, and you'd get the hang of it very, very quickly, because of course there weren't that many settings, there weren't that many different controls. Nowadays, that is not the case, as I'm sure you're, you are familiar yourselves, cameras have not only countless things on the surface, in terms of buttons and settings and things you can tweak, but often potentially hundreds of options within the menu of a camera. Now, I'd be the first to admit that some of those settings might not make a big influence on your shots, but if you set the wrong resolution, the wrong file type, you struggle to make the camera focus properly, you can't trigger the flash, whatever it might be, you're going to have quite fundamental problems on a shoot. Now, this extends, of course, beyond just cameras. You know, equipment generally requires a little bit of a learning curve to get your head around how it works and how you can make the best use of it. Um, not that long ago, I rented a Ronin S something or other gimbal for the first time. And I'd seen them in use, and I think I'd even borrowed one briefly on a shoot before, and I didn't spend very much time particularly familiarizing myself with how it worked. I mean, I got it set up right and I could do basic operations, but that was it. I went out on a shoot with it pretty soon afterwards. And yeah, things were okay, but on several occasions throughout the shoot, the camera just went into orbit. Um, and I had no way of stopping it, controlling it, other, other than just turning it off. As it happened, of course, on this particular shoot, I'd done a lot of coverage. I had lots of footage I could work with. It wasn't a deal breaker. But if the camera had started doing this during a one chance take, that would be a very different matter altogether. Uh, I would be looking at having to try and perhaps reshoot or missing out whole chunks of what I would like to shoot simply because I hadn't learned to use the equipment properly. And of course, that's the answer to solving this problem. Read the manual, <laughs> you know, go deep into the settings, make yourself very familiar with how the equipment works before you use it for an important shoot. You know, take it on test shoots. Use it at home as much as you can. Make sure you're really familiar with it to the point where you could almost use it blindfold without thinking. Because of course your gear, and I'll return to this theme a few times, your gear needs to enable you to take great photographs, not to get in the way of you taking great photographs. Now the second problem with buying more kit or sometimes lots of kit and thinking that it can solve your problems is that the more kit you have, 
the more things there are to go wrong and the more complex your shooting situation becomes. You'll have more things that need setting up, which can take quite a bit of time. You'll have more stuff you have to transport and carry around, and that may well very limit what you can shoot and how you can shoot. You'll also have, particularly nowadays with lots of clever electronic gear, you'll have more batteries that need charging often different types of batteries, and you'll need more cables, more accessories, more plugs. All of this periphery will develop around what you're trying to shoot, when actually, as in so many things in life, the answer is often just to keep it simple. Now, essentially, having lots of stuff means there's lots more stuff that can potentially demand your attention, particularly if anything either goes wrong or you're not familiar with how it works, and therefore you stumble in using it and it slows you down. That means your attention is diverted away from your subject, whatever your subject may be, and that is a bad thing. Now, to use the tired old cliche, it's true that there is the right tool for the job. And it's also true that there's the right amount of tools for the job. As a working professional, some of my shoots require the proverbial kitchen sink. Now, an entire car worth of gear, plus perhaps some extra rented gear and a hire studio, and others require a much smaller footprint. When it is a case that lots and lots of equipment is required, it's almost always backed up by not only extra personnel, like assistants who can help with setting up and then keeping an eye on things during the shoot, but it's also backed up with allowing for time before and after the shoot to set things up and break things down. There is no way I would go into a shoot with loads and loads of gear and expect to be able to pull off something in half an hour when I know that it takes an hour alone just to get everything set up and ready. Likewise, there's quite a bit of stuff I shoot where having loads and loads of gear around would simply slow things up, and what's needed is a small footprint, um, be the ability to move relatively fast and be quite flexible, and respond to changing situations. And having lots of gear can limit your choices. So try and remember the golden rule. Any kit that you spend your money on is supposed to enable you to take great pictures, not hinder you from taking great pictures. Don't expect to master new kit instantly, and don't expect that the answer to your problems is to throw everything at the wall and hope something sticks. I'll cover in the next video some of the key things to look for when you do spend your money on equipment. But right now, the main takeaway I want you to think about is that spending your cash on shiny new toys may not be the best way to improve your photography. But if you find yourself with money to burn and you want to improve your photography game, I would suggest spending your money on these things instead. Firstly, most importantly, education. Broaden your skill set. Learn new techniques, learn new craft skills, go on courses, and get better at what you do. Secondly, spend your money on time, by which I mean allow yourself some space to be creative. Go and see great exhibitions, buy yourself wonderful photography books and spend time just going through them and absorbing great imagery that other people have made. Watch inspiring movies that have been beautifully shot. All of that will help improve your creativity. Next, spend money on personnel. Pay assistants to help you on the day on the shoot. Pay for professional models, for makeup artists, stylists, whatever it might be, because that sort of thing will improve the quality of your work far more than a slightly faster lens. Finally, rent exotic gear, don't buy it. If you've got your arm something really, really sexy, exciting, rent it. Play with it for a bit, see what you think. If it's something you absolutely can't part with, great. You'll have sunk the cost on the rental. You might be able to get some of that back, depending on where you bought it from, and then go and buy it. If instead you find, oh my God, this is far too complicated, it doesn't suit my work at all, you probably haven't thrown that much money at it. You're not in that much of a loss. All of those, I believe will give you much better return on your investment than buying a slightly faster lens or a camera with slightly more megapixels. Now, before you go out and sell everything you own apart from one camera body and a 50mm lens, I will follow this up in the next video by talking about the instances where equipment can get you out of trouble. I'll see you there.